What's up guys, it's Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. Today we have some exciting things to talk about in terms of providing some college advice. Yeah. But not necessarily the advice we gave before. Before the advice was when you're trying to look for a college or what do I do as a graduating senior or maybe a junior and I'm looking to get internships or try to get a job after college. Today's video is going to be talking about the first two weeks in college as either a transfer student or as a new freshman all sorts of questions that you'll probably either discover here or some of you have already gone through it and can relate but before we get started make sure you hit that like button and subscribe down below so you never miss another meteorology monday or any more college advice let's go ahead with the first question here we go okay so this is for those who are freshmen straight out of high school moving right into college you've gotten through syllabus week and you've gotten through through the second week and maybe at this point you're taking mostly gen ed courses you're in a meteorology major but you're mostly taking you know your language arts and your Englishes and and all of that kind of stuff and you're thinking to yourself man I'm really bored I, I I went for a meteorology degree and I'm not even doing any meteorology I want to skip ahead a little bit how do you deal with the boredom of that that's right I know for me one of the things was I grew up watching the weather channel I mean I, I was watching it since its inception in 1982 so by the time I hit college in 1988, and I'm dating myself, I know that. <laughs> I started and, and actually transferred, after getting my associate degree, transferred into a four-year college that had a meteorology program. And uh, I'm like, okay, dudes, you know, wh where's the weather maps? Where's the peeps that, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, I, I want to get into this. I, I'm opening up a book and I'm like, I'm having to learn about climatology and, and not even the exciting climatology no. stuff. It's just kind of like Earth Science 101. And it's like, when do we forecast yeah. for thunderstorms and tornadoes? You know, where is that? Yeah, a lot of those of you who are going into a meteorology major have grown up watching the Weather Channel, have a, a desire to storm chase, or you have a basic knowledge of stuff. So when you show up to class and your professor's like, what's an isodrosotherm? and you're the only one that raised your hand and say, a line of constant dew point. And then they're like, you shouldn't be in an intro class. You need to be. So just stick it out. I promise you're going to get to the harder classes and then you're going to wish for the isodrosotherm days. That's right. So if you're sitting there in your atmosphere 101 class and your professor says, it's probably not a professor, it's probably a TA. And they say, this is a cloud and you've been watching YouTube for years and you've been watching the Weather Channel and you're just looking there going, Oh my god, really? Are we starting with this as a cloud? Don't worry, it gets better. You'll get to thunderstorms and tornadoes eventually. Just, let's get through this class. <laughs> Alright, so here we are. It's been two weeks. If you signed up for Calc 1, you're probably really struggling and you just feel like a hopeless failure and going, my god, why did I choose this major? Let's take a breath here for a second. <laughs> right. Remember your end goal. You're gonna be a meteorologist or, or you're gonna work in the meteorology field depending on which part of it you really enjoy. Some of these things are necessary. You just have to grind through it. Number one, always reach out to either the TA, usually in the lower level courses, you'll have teaching assistants. Reach out to them, reach out to the professor, say, look, I have a goal. This is going to help me achieve that goal. I want to be successful with this. What can I do to learn this a little better? I need some help. Yep. And just, just take that step. Go during office hours. There's a lot of things online now that help. There was no online when I went to school. <laughs> Yeah, just take your questions to somebody who knows their stuff and can teach you and take that time to learn these lower level classes because everything in meteorology builds on it. So really make sure that you understand it and don't worry, everybody feels like a failure when they take Calc 1. <laughs> there is hope, we promise. <laughs> And Calc 2. And Calc 3. And Calc 3. And, calc and differential four. equations. I know the main driving force for me is I've wanted to be a meteorologist since I was eight years old. And so this was my goal. And even if I ground it out and got a C in the class, I did it. Don't beat yourself up if you don't have A's constantly. Yep. You know, C's some give degrees. People, that's right. Some people just don't have a strength in that area. That's all right. That's Remember okay. your end goal and just keep your head down, keep focused, learn what you can learn, use all the resources available to you. Our next question. How do I concentrate in class when there's a storm? And or if storm chasing falls on an exam day, can I skip the exam to go <laughs> storm chasing instead? <laughs> 
Do you want my honest answer <laughs> or the helpful one? Here's my personal answer, okay? Our personal answer. I got accepted into a small mountain school in North Carolina and also Oklahoma University. Did I think that I would focus if I went to Oklahoma and there were storms? <laughs> Absolutely not. So where did I end up? The mountains of North Carolina. <laughs> know yourself, my dudes, and put yourself in a situation where you know that you're not going to waste $60,000 a year. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla's four-year tenure would have turned out to be eight years because she would have kept skipping all the exams. All of them. <laughs> Fortunately for me, there weren't a whole lot of storms during the semesters in upstate New York. I went to SUNY Albany. So when there was, yeah, my attention was I was looking out the window and that just, it is what it is. I will say that I have had professors skip their own classes to go <laughs> storm chasing and other classes where the professor just paused the class so we could all go stare out in the window. So, I mean, if you're going for meteorology, everybody's a weather nerd. So That's right. Chances are if something interesting is happening outside, perhaps your professor or TA will join you <laughs> looking out the window. And some of your other classmates too. Probably all of them. But you know, in the end, really, it's about your education. It's about what you want to get out of it. You're paying for it. So you know what you can afford to miss and not miss. <laughs> so that's in your hands. Take this as you take it. <laughs> we are not liable for any money wasted. That's right. <laughs> or any grades lower than a C. Nope. <laughs> but you do you. You enjoy your best life. <laughs> Our next question is talking about uh, that moment when you figure out that you picked a really hard major and perhaps your roommate and some of your new college friends or maybe even people that you knew before college that are going to this college with you picked an easier major and they have time for a social life and they're out partying or having fun or going hiking and you're stuck inside doing homework. That realization kind of starts to hit you when you get into your first couple classes in those first couple weeks. How do you deal with that? First of all, you got to have a mindset that meteorology is along the lines of an engineering program. Yes. Um, the full-blown bachelors of science program treat it as an engineering program it is almost be, the same classes except for you know they specifics. they diverge in their junior years but a lot of the foundation stuff is the same as an engineering curriculum so it, it's tough you know really especially tough. when you got friends or, or especially your roommate and they've got other majors that it's not as stringent as the requirements for an atmospheric science degree. One of the things that you can do is sync up with other classmates mm -hmm. that you're, you have classes with in the atmospheric sciences program because they're gonna go through the same thing as you are. And by being together, you can work collaboratively and you also have similar schedules and similar goals too. Yep. So, you know, someone that is in the arts or music, they're not going to have the same goal as you are when it comes to atmospheric right. science, and they're not going to have the same workload as you are. Number two is, is don't forsake all the fun. Correct. you got to give your brain a break. You, you, you're going to burn yourself <laughs> out immediately. That's right. I mean... So the first two weeks, you're going to look at this big old mountain in front of you, but you, you've got to take it as, okay, it's been two weeks, I've acclimated, I've got an idea, and I know for yourself where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, what you need to do to be successful. Remember, your goal is to graduate in four years and get yourself a meteorology job or something in the field of meteorology. Just stick with it and find those things. So what do you do now that you've been in college for two weeks and you really realize, you know what? High school really didn't prepare me for college life. I know I had that happen to me. Specifically, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of people going for my major <laughs> when I was graduating high school. Um, so when I got to college and, and saw that these professors hold you accountable. They treat you like an adult. They expect things to be done at a certain time. If not, there's consequences. So what do you do if you're not prepared? Well, just kind of be honest and open with your professors yep. and saying, you know, if you are struggling in a particular subject, just let them know, I want to do my best in this class. What resources are available to me here at the college? You know, you just take it one day at a time and you're just going to have to acclimate to college life. Yep, and don't be scared of your professors. I know that my first year-ish in college, I was kind of like, oh, oh, I don't want to bother them. And, and now they're probably too busy for me. And no, man, you're paying for this. Go up to them. They're more than happy to help you. They love teaching, obviously, because they're professors. They're going to be there for you and help answer your questions. Some of my professors would actually sit down with me afterwards and go through the homework problems that I got wrong and show me how to actually do it. So your professors are definitely there for you. If you didn't feel like high school prepared you, your professors can kind of help you make up for lost time. You just have to let them know and be willing to take a step back and be like, all right, I don't know everything. <laughs>
<laughs> and I need your help. And yeah, just go from there. That's right. And also reach out to other classmates. Yes. Maybe some of them have the same experience as you do. So, you know, maybe you guys can get together and try studying together. Maybe somebody might have gotten a concept better in class than what you did, or you got it better than they did, and you can just help each other out. An answer to most of these questions is find friends in your major that are smarter than you. <laughs> All right, and now for one of the most important questions that you're going to be asking yourself after this is important. two weeks with the name meteorology major attached to your name, how do you answer the question, what's the weather gonna be today? <laughs> Can you change the weather? I don't want it to be raining today. Oh, don't you have an instrument that can just get rid of the clouds? <laughs> throw something at people. <laughs> you must be prepared. Because if somebody asks you what the weather's gonna be and you say, I don't know, Lord have mercy, the heavens will open. The comments, the criticisms, the jokes that a meteorology <laughs> major doesn't know what the weather's gonna be. So make it a point to wake up every morning and check your weather app. Worst case scenario, just tell them, oh, I'm going for climatology. That's past weather. <laughs> It was 70 degrees yesterday <laughs> yeah. and save yourself. Or just start speaking nonsense about like the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. <laughs> yes. And they'll just be like, I don't care anymore. That'll quickly end the conversation. Yep. Next question. How do you find your place in a small, tight-knit group of meteorology majors? Because when you walk into the, the weather lab or on the meteorology floor, you're gonna notice that when you went from the chemistry floor to the meteorology floor, it went from 500 people to like 20. So, <laughs> how, do or you less. Find, how do you find your place in such a, a close, you know, such a, a, a small group? Yeah, it can be very intimidating when you walk in and you've already got, you know, as a meteorology major, as you'll find when you get to your junior and senior year, you become very close with your classmates and you just sit there and you do all your homework together, you do everything together, you just sit basically in the lab all day. So walking in as a freshman or a transfer and seeing this group of people who obviously all know each other, they're all doing homework together, it's very intimidating. Best advice, just put yourself out there, join the AMS club if your school has one, jump in on the weather challenge if you want to your first couple semesters there. They might be scary, don't worry about it. Go talk to them anyways. I'm sure if you put yourself out there, they will invite you into their little fold as well. That's right. And it's kind of along the lines of, you know, if you went to a gym and, you know, you wanted to work out using weights, but this is your first time. And you walk in and you go, okay, I know what a weight looks like, but do I need to learn proper form. I need to know what works for me, what I actually want to do, what do I want to focus on. So when you walk into a meteorology lab or meteorology floor and you're hearing you know, sophomores and juniors and seniors and grad students and professors chucking out all this kind of met lingo. Don't feel intimidated because everybody's been there yep. and and they know that and they're not there to critique or criticize you. When you say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm so-and-so, I'm new this year, I'm, I'm starting out as a freshman, really excited. You're going to get a lot of support because yep. everybody's been there. The next question is how to deal with perpetually being called a nerd for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, just accept it. You are a nerd. You love weather. It's not a bad thing. You it's know? good. It's, it's a good thing. It's a good term. You'll understand. Give it a little bit longer. You'll understand. Nerd is a compliment. That's right. Next we have how to not compare yourself to other classmates who are perhaps getting all the A's while you get B's and C's. It's a tough one, but know your limits and be proud of your accomplishments. You are in an extreme difficult major and if the best that you can physically do is a B and you get a B be proud of it there are some people who just are naturally inclined to get certain subjects easier than others and you'll find that in other classes you're the ones getting the A and other people are struggling so just keep with it and don't put yourself down for getting a lower grade be happy with your best if that's all that you can get that's right and hopefully now at this two week point you've been able to get to know some of your classmates and so you've identified the ones making the better grades you know maybe you can strike up a conversation with them ask them after class hey you know is there any way we can study together or yeah. how, how did you get that concept I don't understand that and I'd like to learn exactly. more. Okay, now this one, this is a must have. You gotta do this. Gotta do All it. right, are you ready for this? Should you or should you not participate in breakfast for dinner? I gotta say the answer is always yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no problem that can't be solved after having some eggs, bacon, and pancakes after 6 p.m. Exactly.
Okay, so at what point do you just say, you know what, I don't know if meteorology is for me. Should I quit? Should I go find another major? Should I change it from major to minor? What's some advice that you could give there? Yeah, it's a big question that you have to ask yourself, especially if you're not loving certain things. From personal experience, I would say give it at least a couple different classes, okay? If you're taking intro to meteorology and you're bored and you're like, maybe this isn't for me, wait till you take that next class that is a level up. If you're taking a climatology class and you're like, I hate this, wait till your next semester when you take a meteorology class. You know, atmospheric sciences as a whole is really big, there's a few different concentrations. So before you bail on it completely, make sure that you're trying everything. Because obviously if you went to school for atmospheric sciences, you have something in there that you love. So make sure that you're taking that class that has that subject that you love before you decide to either quit or minor in it. The other thing is if you're thinking about dropping it because the math and the physics and some of the chemistry is just way too much, you love the weather, but the science and the math that goes with it is, it, it's too much, consider minoring in it. It's not a bad option. You still get to take your meteorology specific classes, not as many, but you still get to take a bunch of them and you don't have to do as much calculus. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a go. great option if you don't like calculus. There you go. Ultimately, the end goal is, is what are you looking to get out of this, where do you want to work? What is the specific discipline within meteorology that you're going for? And see what the requirements are. You might not need chemistry and calculus for what you're going for. Exactly. But there might be requirements to do that. So before you go making changes in your academic career, you have to see what your actual career is going to be and what the requirements are there. Because if you change, then it's going to be much harder to get into that career that you want. Exactly. So there you have it. Probably a dozen or so questions that we were able to try to answer that probably are the most common questions for anyone doing their first two weeks of college. Definitely questions that these are some that we came up with because we remember going through all those yep. all those pain points. But if we didn't answer a question that is important to you, go ahead and leave that below in the comments. Absolutely, and we can either respond to it or if there's enough questions, again, we might make a part two later on in the school year. Again, guys, uh, we appreciate you watching our videos. Absolutely. And, and don't forget to follow us over on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, popping up right here. Until next Next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Oh, that was loud. <laughs>